Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you the many different ways that you can customize your drummer performances so that they feel natural and are just a much better fit for the vision that you have for your songs and music. We're going to work with a riff from last week's video. It's rock based and includes rhythm guitars, lead guitar and bass. We're going to add a drummer track, add drummer regions and then customize the individual regions so that they're just fit like a glove with the individual sections of this riff. Of course, anytime we're talking about drummer, I have to point out the drummer in Logic Pro is amazing. I mean, in this year, in 2022, plugin developers are just kind of catching up to this major songwriting innovation that came out in Logic back in 2013. And what drummer provides you with is a slew of virtual drum players that are available to you in a moment's notice. And you can populate an entire song worth of drums with a click of a button or a key command. And what you have available to you is a full range from rock drums to electronic drum beats to hip hop, Latin percussion, alternative, R&B. I mean, the options are almost endless. And I just find it amazing each and every time. So let's take a listen to a snippet of each section of this riff. And if we open the global track lanes, you can see that I've set up arrangement markers to know each section of the riff. So we have an intro section, a chorus section, and a verse section. So I'll just play a small snippet and then skip ahead just so you have a sense of what we're working with before we dig into drummer. Here we go. Okay, cool. So let's bring drummer into the picture here. And we're going to go to the little plus symbol right in the header of the tracks area. And this allows us to bring up the new track dialogue. We're going to bring up a drummer track type. And under genre, we're going to choose rock. And let's hit create. Now, because of the arrangement markers that I laid out across my riff, Logic has gone ahead and populated the same amount of drummer regions for each marker. And they're the same length as well. So for example, if we create a new arrangement marker and we stretch it way out and then create a drummer region, that drummer region is the same length as this really long marker, which is really helpful. Let's back it up. And if we select our drummer track here and go to the library by going up to the little filing cabinet icon in the control bar, we can see that by default for the rock genre of drummers, we have Kyle. He's a pop rock drummer with the SoCal kit, which is noted in the sound section right here. And of course, we could choose from many different drummers, not only from rock, but the other categories. And there are many drummers within each category. Let's take a listen to what Logic is offering us for each section of our riff. Of course, Logic doesn't know out of the gate what the guitars and bass are doing for each section. But based on what I've noted in each arrangement marker, I've chosen that the first arrangement marker is an intro, the second a chorus, and the third a verse. So each drummer region is its own unique performance. So let's take a listen and see how close Logic gets to something usable. Here we go. Okay, they all sound great. It's just not what I had in mind for each section of my riff. So we're going to further customize using the drummer editor. So let's close the library and let's close the global track lanes and zoom in on this first intro section. And I think it's worthwhile to zoom in on the regions because as you start to make adjustments using the XY pad or clicking on the individual drums, you get a visual immediate presentation of what is being changed. So you have at least a sense of what's going on even before you start listening to it. For this particular intro section, what I imagine is not a whole lot. I imagine a ride cymbal and a kick drum punctuating with those guitar and bass hits. Even crash cymbals would be nice. And maybe a big fill at the end of the intro that leads us into the chorus. So let's start out by taking the puck here in the XY pad, plugging it right into the top left-hand corner of the simple and loud section. Let's select the cymbals so that we get the ride in there. And let's deselect the snare because I don't want to snare at all. 
And let's take a listen to what Logic is offering us. That's way too loud for me, so I want to test out some of the other cymbal options. I don't really want that heavy crash thing. I want a ride, and I want it just kind of like twinkling in the background. Let's take a listen to what this offers us. Okay, number three is definitely for me. I love the sound of that. Let's start to play with the kick and snare pattern as well because the kicks aren't landing with the guitars and bass like I'd like them to. So I'm going to plug this at number one and let's just see. All right, the first and second kick hits at the beginning and at the next bar, those are landing where I want them to. We're going to have to dig in a little further, but this is fine for now. And let's start to play with the fill control as well. Because as we start to bump up the fills, obviously we're adding fills, but we start to get crash hits at certain moments as well. So the beginning, and then we're getting some fill action here. Let's take a listen. Pretty good. You know, it's not perfect. Let's try moving the fills all the way to 100%. Now check it out. We have this fill at the end and a whole lot of extra stuff going on. But let's play with the fill control a little more. And let's play with it again. And do you notice that the fills are slight different variations each time when we play with that fill control at that end point? You know, we're seeing some hits up here sometimes for the toms and then we're not. So if you don't like a fill that is offered to you the first time by playing with the fill control, you can, you know, you can move in and then move it back to see if something better is generated or something you like more. So let's take a listen to this fill because I bet I'm going to like it. I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? I don't like all this action down here, but I'm fairly satisfied here. We could always choose to have this region follow a performance elsewhere in the project. And that's like really a beautiful thing about drummer is that you can tell drummer, hey, pay attention to the bass or pay attention to the guitars or keys or whatever for timing and for how the performance should be played out. So let's try that right now. Let's choose follow. And if we, we see here that we're following a drum kit that's actually hidden, take a look. Let's not follow the hidden drum kit. Instead, let's choose maybe the bass. Okay. Now you see that I've accidentally changed every region to follow the bass across this performance because I've accidentally selected each and every region. So let's back it up and let's just select just this region here. Cool. Let's select the bass. Okay, nothing much is changing. Let's choose a guitar. Nothing really is changing. That's pretty interesting to me. Oh, I think we saw some changes there. So yeah, some slight changes. Okay, that's not going to guess where we need to go. But that's fine. Let's explore how we're going to work with the chorus and verse sections and see if we can get there pretty quickly. And then we'll dig back into the intro and really fine tune it. Okay, sounds good. It's just to me, the ride symbol is a little too dainty for this chorus section and it's a little too busy on the kick and snare patterns. So let's move the symbol action here to the hi hat. And let's bring the puck over to the simple and loud section. And it's getting a little simpler now. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. I actually think that's pretty good. Now, maybe I don't want so much of the galloping action here before the next bar. I actually like it. But just for the sake of conversation, let's place the playhead right at that next bar and use key command, command T to split the regions. Now we see some variations have occurred. And let's take this first region of the chorus and let's reduce the fills pretty much all the way. Be like that. And then we'll leave the second region alone. And let's take a listen to how that flows. A 
Okay, I don't really like that. I'm just gonna remove the fill altogether. That feels better to me. And let's now explore the verse because I'm pretty happy with the chorus and I even dig this fill into the verse. Okay, again, I, I feel like the hi-hats should be quieter and I feel like the kick and snare, really the kick is a little too busy. So again, let's plug this in over here. But let's you know bring it down into the more quieter end of things so that the hi-hat is quieter. Here we go. And maybe we can get drummer to follow along with one of the guitars or bass. Okay, so again, it's following that hidden drum kit. Let's choose the bass. A little too busy. Let's choose a guitar. Let's play with the fill a little more. We seem to only be impacting the very end, so I'm going to leave it. I'm pretty happy with that overall for the verse as well. But there's another option for you to play with the timing and also the performance of your drummer regions, and that's through groove tracks. Now, groove tracks are often overlooked, and they're hidden in the track header configuration window. So if you hold option and click key command T, you bring up this menu that allows you to organize or configure your track headers by, you know, removing or introducing certain buttons or functions. You can also right click or hold control and click right on a track header and go down to configure track header. So we have this option for groove track. And when we click on it, it doesn't seem like anything different has occurred, but that's because the groove tracks are hidden in the leftmost side of the track headers. And you can see now that there is this star icon and what the groove track provides is us to be able to specify a track in our project as really the reference for the timing of any other track in the project. What I mean by this is, let's say maybe the bass is our timing reference. So let's close the editor. Let's hover our mouse, click on that star. Now check it out. If we zoom in on both of these track types, and now we have these boxes to either enable or disable on the other tracks. If we click on the drummer track, we see some variations in the performance. And really it's not about changing performance, it's about having drummer line up its timing with the bass performance. But as a result or a side effect, the performances within the drummer regions are also adapted ever so slightly. So if we take a listen to this fill here, right at the end of the intro section, check it out and how it differs. I actually love how the snare like really builds up the hype into the next section. And if we turn it off, take a listen again. Awesome. So I actually prefer having the groove track on in this case. And you see some other slight variations as well. This applies to any track type as well. It's not just drummer. In fact, if we open up Flex and if we turn this on for the lead guitar, we can see some variations are happening down there. Turn it off, turn it back on. Software track types will also adapt themselves whether they are MIDI regions or pattern regions. Okay, at this point, let's tidy up this intro section and really get it to where I want it to go. To do that, I'm gonna right click the region and I'm going to go to convert and convert the drummer region to MIDI. And this is amazing because if you feel that you've gotten as far as you can get with the drummer editor, with switching drummers, drum kits, and this is the best that it can be, you can convert to MIDI, and at that point, you can dig into the individual notes of the drum performance and really fine-tune things. And it's worth pointing out, look at all the variation in the performance. There's different colors for velocity, the way that the notes are interspersed across several instances. In this example, the ride cymbal. So we have the ride in, but we have the ride bell, and maybe it would even hit the ride out or something later on. You know, so there's a lot of care and detail in these performances, and it's worth noting that when you're plugging in your own notes into the drum performances. Just to make things easier, I'm going to switch the view to drum names. So now we're only seeing the drum names and the notes of the drums that are applicable to this kit. Perfect. All right, so let's take a listen to the drum performance and start changing the performance so it's a better fit for this intro.
Okay, right out of the gate, I don't really want these hits here. They're just, I don't feel like that they fit for the riff that I have in my head. This kick hit, maybe, we'll see. And then we have a kick hit right here, which is awesome. But I want it to be accented with some symbols, but I want the symbols to kind of like appear and then close. So we have these options for crash left stop and crash right stop. And if we plug those in, and let me just turn that off. And let's even adjust the timing ever so slightly of one of the symbols so they're not just exactly on time. And let's take a listen. That's sick, but we do have to keep in mind the anatomy of a human being playing the drums and a drummer has two hands. Can't play two cymbals and close them and play a ride cymbal the whole way through as well. He, he would need a third arm for that. In that case, we're going to mute these two ride hits. Okay, that's okay by me. We're going to bring in that crash right hit right here and maybe just remove that ride symbol. If we take a look at the performance here, yeah, there's no ride symbol with the crash hit, so it's just going to be the one crash. Let's take a listen. Again, I'm not sure if I feel in a, a, a fill through this section. We'll maybe keep that kick hit, but again, we'll bring in these crash stop hits, drag that back, and mute everything here. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. Let's, let's go over here. We'll just plug them in, mute these two guys. Awesome. You know, we can further fine tune from there. I'm trying to keep this brief. All of that provides you so much versatility for fine-tuning your drummer track so that they feel natural and feel like a good fit for your songs and music. Sometimes you can get away with just the drummer editor. Sometimes you got to dig into the weeds a little bit, chop up the regions, even dig into the MIDI data. But I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Why Logic Per Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicperrules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.